Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. In this tutorial, we'll be creating this really fun geometric style cake with an isomalt cup slash shard. What you want to do is melt your isomalt down on low to medium heat until it's completely melted. I like to use the over the top brand or even the sugar crafty is really good too. Once melted down, you could add in some gel food color. I've actually added in some airbrush color in the gold shimmer. Make sure you wear gloves for this because it is super, super hot and you can burn yourself really badly. Move it around the silicon mat. I like to pinch my mat in the corner so that you get more of a sharper sort of drip happening. And then let it rest over a wine bottle or some sort of tall skinny bottle. Pinch it in areas, put a peg over it and that way it sets nice and cupped. Let it sit there to set completely for 10 minutes or if you'd like, once it's okay to sort of touch but it's still flexible, you can grab little sections that have pulled at the corners and pull them down to create really cool stringy sections of the um, drippy areas. This next step is crucial. You want to be very, very gentle, very slow and careful when pulling away your silicon mat. You do not want it to break. Now that that's prepared, we can start on our cake. I've chosen a five inch round cake and I've stacked three cakes together to get this super tall cake. I'll leave a video in the eye icon up top and in the description box below how to assemble a cake this tall. I'm creating a crumb coat. This is a thin layer of frosting all around the cake to trap in the crumbs. Once it's nice and smooth on the sides, bring that lip of frosting to the middle and then pop your cake into the fridge to set for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, on goes the final layer of frosting. I've chosen to go in with baby blue frosting and the recipe for this particular type of frosting is linked again in the eye icon up top and in the description box below for you. Smooth it out, fill in any spaces as you go and then bring that lip of frosting to the center again. This time we're returning it to the fridge for at least an hour so it has time to completely firm up. In the meantime, we can cut out our triangles. This is a multi triangle cutter by Sugar Crafty and I have three different colors of fondant. Roll it out to about three millimeters in thickness and then press your cutter into the fondant. Give it a good shake on the countertop so that it um, cuts around the corners really sharply and then just tap it to release your triangles. The fondant that I like to use is the Bakehouse brand. Once they're all cut, you can apply them onto your super firm cake. I've brushed on a little bit of water and I'm starting at the very top. Add the triangles one next to the other. And for the size that I created, I created four full squares and then half of a square on either side. And I followed that sort of system, creating two um, squares and then half on either side, and then just a little triangle piece at the bottom. And that created a large looking triangle. When you're starting the same pattern at the bottom, make sure you line it up with the very end. I've used just my scraper to help me align that and keep building the same way. Be sure to alternate your colors as you go so that you don't have the same color next to the other one. Grab a fondant smoother and smooth out your little fondant pieces to make sure they're nice and neat and flat. And then I decided that I wanted a little bit more detail. So I continued this on the outsides. And this process is actually super, super therapeutic. I absolutely loved doing this. You just lose track of time. And at the end, you get this symmetrical looking pattern. It's just so, so satisfying. From here, you can now apply your isomalt cap. And I'm doing that with just a little bit of frosting right in the middle. You could leave it as is, or you could add some extra details. So I've got this really cool uh, metallic blue. It's like a luster dust in a palette by Sweet Sticks and it's water activated. So you add a little bit of water to this little blue palette and creates this edible metallic looking blue paint. 
With a thin paintbrush, I'm just going to dust over the edges to highlight these. If you're enjoying these tutorials, feel free to subscribe. We do upload a new tutorial every week. And just like that, your cake is complete. So much fun. It looks super effective, even on a shorter cake as well. Just again, be super careful with the ice melt because it is super, super hot to work with. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and give it a go. If you do, hashtag Rosie's Dessert Spot so I can see your awesome creations as well. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.